Hello everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Today we are going to talk about cancers that happen in the liver. There are two main varieties. One are called primary liver cancers. These are the cancers which start in the liver. So they are arising from the liver cells. The second variety are secondary liver cancers. These are the cancers which arise in other parts of our body, not the liver. It may arise in the bowel, the breast, the lungs or wherever in the body and then travel to the liver. And this is also called liver metastasis. So primary liver cancer is also called a hepatoma. The commonest cause of a hepatoma is cirrhosis. If you don't know what cirrhosis is, which is scarring of the liver, then do please uh, watch my video on cirrhosis or any other video on the YouTube about cirrhosis. This is the commonest cause of primary liver cancer. Liver cancer happening in non-cirrhotic liver which is a normal liver, um, hasn't got cirrhosis in it, is rather uncommon but can happen because of many conditions, some of which I have written over here like hepatitis, which is a violent infection of the liver because of gallstones in some patients with diabetes and uh, infection of the liver by a parasite called liver fluke. The second types of liver cancers are secondary liver cancers or liver metastases. The reason these happen is because as I explained before in the functions of the liver on the video on that, please watch it, that liver is a very vascular organ and lots of blood goes through our liver and with that blood all the material from different parts of the body goes to the liver and this material can contain broken down cancer cells coming from other parts of the body. So if there's a cancer in the colon or in the breast or in the pancreas, the cells from the cancer, they break and they go with the blood into the liver and they settle down in the liver because liver is a very fertile place for them to settle down and to grow. So I've written a few sites where the tumors or cancers from these sites can grow to the liver. It can happen from other sites as well, but these are perhaps a commoner sites that came in my mind. Colon cancer or bowel cancer is one of the commonest sites because all the blood from the colon goes through the liver. Breast cancer is again a common site, cancer of the pancreas, cancers called neuroendocrine tumors which are halfway between cancerous tumors and benign tumors. They can act both ways. Melanomas and tumors or cancers coming from the ovary and the testicle, they can all go to the liver. So what symptoms can patients get who develop liver cancer? Some of the symptoms of early liver cancer are very non-specific, which means they are so, so common with their conditions like flu, not feeling well, etc., etc., that they're usually ignored by the patients. Early liver cancer might not have any symptoms at all, but as the disease progresses, patients start feeling tired, fatigued, so they can't walk very far um, because they're getting feeling very tired. They start losing weight without trying to lose weight. Even when they try and put on the weight, the weight will not come back on and they keep losing weight. They become jaundice, which means they have yellow uh, skin and eyes become yellow as well. They get abdominal pain, especially on the right side of the abdomen under the rib cage where the liver is. So do check my video on the liver anatomy. And the tummy can swell up because a fluid develops in the tummy called ascites. Patients who have a secondary liver cancer, which means coming from somewhere else, obviously they can get all these symptoms. But in addition, they can also get symptoms from where the primary tumor is. So if the cancer is coming from the bowel or the colon, then they might have change of bowel habits. They might have blood in the poo. If the cancer is coming from the breast, they might have a lump in the breast. So other symptoms do add on in addition to the primary liver cancer. So how are these tumors diagnosed? Simple liver function tests, which I've talked about in my previous videos, uh, showing that there is something not right with the liver. There are several scans which can look at the liver quite well. Ultrasound scan, CT scan, MRI scan, a keyhole operation called a laparoscopy. A PET scan, uh, which is called positron emission tomography scan, very important, especially the tumor is coming from somewhere else to the liver, like coming from the colon or the breast or the pancreas. This is a very important scan because this can pick up tumor spread in the body. 
Not all these scans are required in every patient. Some patient might require a couple of scans, some might require more than a couple. Sometimes a biopsy is very important because without a biopsy, a doctor might not be 100% sure that what sort of cancer it is and what sort of treatment will be required. So treatment of liver cancer is um, quite variable. It depends on many factors. Factor number one is the fitness of the patient. Factor number two is where the tumor is coming from, whether it is arising from the liver or it's coming from somewhere else from the body into the liver. Number three, how advanced the disease is in the liver. Is it in only one place in the liver or is it in multiple places in the liver? And what is the size of the, these tumors in the liver? Has it spread anywhere else in the body from the liver, like the bones or in the lining of the tummy, etc.? So all these things are decided by a group of doctors and nurses. Those doctors are not just surgeons, but also doctors who look at x-rays, who are also oncologists, experts in chemotherapy and um, other forms of treatment. So depending on the stage of the disease, they can decide whether chemotherapy is necessary or useful to the patient because do remember, not every patient is suitable for cure. Not every patient disease is suitable for cure. In some patients, the treatment is aimed to reduce the size of the tumor so the patients will have a better quality of life until the life ends. So chemotherapy, in these days, quite advanced chemotherapy is available like chemoembolization, targeted chemotherapy, which means that chemotherapy can be delivered directly to the tumor in the liver. Liver tumors can be burnt with electric current or by microwave treatment or called electrocoagulation of the liver. Surgery is available. Obviously, part of the liver can be removed. Even liver transplants can be done in small percent of patients. If none of this is possible, then the only treatment left is palliative treatment, which means trying to control uh, the patient's symptoms. The patient is in pain, trying to control their pain. If the patient is jaundiced, trying to relieve their jaundice. If the patient is losing weight, trying to give them good nutrition. Um, if the patient is developing too much fluid in the tummy, trying to get rid of that fluid from the tummy so their life is comfortable. Sometimes palliative chemotherapy can be given so a tumor can be shrunk down, although it cannot be cured, but it can be shrunk down so that patient will have a better quality of life and slightly longer life. If the tumor is coming from elsewhere, like for, from the colon or from the breast, then removing the primary tumor, which means removing the part of the colon or removing the lump from the breast, also becomes part of the treatment of liver tumor. I do hope you found this video informative and if you did, then please remember to subscribe and give us a like. And until next time, see you soon. Thanks for watching.